What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Cole, we got Jay behind the camera. Hello. And today we've got a really cool episode. So we are in Northeast Arkansas, we're in the Mississippi Delta, and we're currently driving behind two of our bird biologist friends, Alex and Em. Um, we all went to ASU together, and today we are doing something really awesome. We are actually on the road, we are looking for loggerhead shrikes. And we're, it looks like we're actually pulling over right now, but anyways, the loggerhead shrike is M's study species, and she is wrapping up a master's project. So what we're doing is we are looking to recite some birds that she's caught and banded, as well as find some new birds and ban them, get some information on them. So we're driving around, looking around some high wires, looking at some bushes, and uh, as soon as we find one, we're gonna pull over and we're gonna get a trap out and see if we can catch one for you guys. It's gonna be awesome. We'll see you when we find a bird and uh, hopefully get one really close to camera for you guys. Alright guys, looks like we've glassed up a bird in the distance. He's out there on that rig. Right there, he's on a low wire. And we are about to go set up a trap and try to catch him. Alright, so this is M. And she's going to tell y'all about the trap we're going to be using to capture this loggerhead shrike today. Okay, so we got one in a good position, so we're just going to get the trap ready now. Um, this is a modified potter trap, so how it works is there's two trap doors, one on the front here and one up top. And it's just a simple rubber band spring action door. And we have our little shrike catchers here. Um, these are my mice. Yeah, explain this. Explain <laughs> the shrike catch. This is the best part of the whole equation. Yeah, so this is an interesting way to capture um, a songbird specifically, but since they do have such um, predator-like habitats, um, habits, they will go after such organisms such as big vertebrates like mice and snakes. <laughs> um, so we're gonna use this little girl right here. To What's her name? We were in our shrike. This is Mocha. Mocha. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have another one? Did you just bring just Mocha? Um, we also have Moo. She's kind of older and retired. Oh. She's she's caught many <laughs> shrikes in her heyday. So <laughs> she's just emotional support now. Yeah. So these mice are going to be unharmed by the shrike. Like Em just mentioned, they're, they've been used several times to catch multiple shrikes, and um, they just work as great bait. <laughs> they're very important field techs of mine. <laughs> And then over here, we've got Alex. Y'all probably remember Alex from our North Carolina adventures. What up, guys? Last time you saw me, he was probably messing around some dog poop, looking for rainbow scarabs. Oh, yeah. Great vid. You excited to find some large head shrikes today? Yeah, these are great, great birds. But when you catch them, they'll bite you and they'll make you bleed. So I wonder how bad a large head shrike bite actually hurts. It's I mean, pretty painful. I've never been bitten by Very one. Very sharp bill, and they'll just go right into the skin. Ooh. Um, so you'll find out. We'll find out. A little cage that we're going to put Mocha in so that she stays nice and safe. Yep. Um, we are using her as bait pretty much for the trap, but <laughs> she's not going to be harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Jay, are you excited? You never caught a shrike before, have no. you? No. I've been out with Alex one time and caught one once before, and I've been longing to do it ever since. This is so much fun. They're pretty fun. All right, Mocha. We're just going to do your thing, Mocha. Put her safely in here, secure her so that. Shrike can't run off with her. She's like, I know what to do. <laughs> and then we'll just make sure that these two trap doors are open and we're ready to go. Okay, well, let's go set it up. We'll put some GoPros around it and uh, we'll hopefully capture the Shrike entering the cage. All right, we're walking down a trail. We've got him spotted and we're about to set up the trap with the mouse and hopefully he'll see it and fly right down to it. Okay, so this is where he'll enter. We're gonna set one camera up right where he'll enter at and we'll set another one up at another angle so maybe we'll see him walking around the cage. All right, we're back in the vehicle. We're here just watching the strike. He's at the top of the tree, so he's got a good vantage point. He can definitely see the mouse. It just It's gonna depend if he wants to come down and get in the trap and try to get it, which I would think so. So when, when the wintertime strikes feed heavily on vertebrates more so than insects, and they'll cache them. So what they do, they, they make this thing called a larder, and basically they'll grab that mouse and they'll kill it, and then they'll take it and stab it onto like a branch or a piece of barbed wire, and then they'll return to it 
and feed on it whenever they need to. Savages. They do it. They do it with frogs, lizards, snakes, small birds. They do it with everything. It's really quite savage. It's really cool if we could find one today, but we're just more caught up on seeing if we can actually catch a shrike today. It could definitely happen. We'll see if we get this one. If not, we'll probably find another bird and try to catch him. All right, guys, we just spotted another bird. We pulled over on the side of the road and we're about to go set the trap up right now. So, wish confident. us luck this time. We gotta be sneaky though. We keep spooking them off. It's right here on the wire. You can't get really close. They have really good eyesight, so they should be able to see this mouse moving from a great distance. We're at a site where they spotted some shrikes before and they banded them. We were expecting this one to probably be banded, but it's a clean bird, meaning it has no bands. So it'd be really, really cool to get some information on this one. He's just up on the high wire right now. Can't really tell what he's doing, but hopefully he'll see that mouse pretty soon. He probably already seen it. On a scale from one to a thousand, how much do you want to catch a shrike today? Um. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. Yes, what? I want to catch what? one so bad, and I like want to see it fly down from the wire and land in front of the trap and get inside of it. I don't want to miss that. Oh. So, <gasps> what happened? Yeah, he he flew he on the other side of the ditch. Oh, we might have to move the trap. Dang. What you think, Alex? This is good. We have a shrike right near the trap. Should be able to see the mouse make some movements, and that's gonna hopefully draw it down to the trap. We've pretty much been unsuccessful. Well, we've definitely been unsuccessful <laughs> with the first four birds. Oh, here he comes! Here he movement, comes! Here he comes! He's coming down! Coming down! There we go! Bird! Oh, bird is! Oh. Bird is on the trap. He's on top yes. of the trap. The bird's on top of the trap, Jay. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if he's in front of the camera on the GoPro, but he'll figure it out hopefully. Hopefully it enters on the ground. There's okay. two there's it's two safe, openings. But she's moving around, so Oh snap, the there Lord. is a shrike Lord on the working. trap. Right on cue. Yay! The top. Woo he went Yay! through the top. <laughs> Jay is so jack. <laughs> Dang, that's okay. Alright guys, we got the strike. In the trap, that bird is beautiful. We're gonna get him out, and we're gonna get a close look at him, get him banded. Okay, so now that we have him safely contained, we're just gonna get him in what we call the bander's grip. So we're just gonna gently grip his body, secure his head, and get him out of the trap so we can start processing him. All we got right. one! <laughs> About two it hours later. It took us a few tries, but. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> bird. Looks just like a mean mockingbird. <laughs> yep. So right now we're just trying to age and sex this bird. And so they actually have this weird patterning that you can use on their um, wing here. So if you look at their sixth primary, um, you just count them down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And then if you look at the separation of the black from the white and how far that black extends up the rachis, that's sort of how we sex it as male or female. That's awesome. So for this one, we're gonna say it's a male because yeah. it only extends about 50% into that white. Mm -hmm. And the separation right here is pretty horizontal. Whereas females are gonna have a lot more black extending into that white. And they're also gonna have a V-shaped separation right there. That's awesome. So we got a little male, longer head strike. And we're also gonna say that it's a young bird. So it's kind of hard to see, but in the light, um, you can kind of see a difference here in the coloration on the wing. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, you can see these younger feathers are sort of a more brownish color. And then these more recently replaced older adult feathers are much nicer, darker black. So we're gonna say this is a younger bird. Young bird, young feisty loggerhead shrike. And it's after January now, so we, we're gonna call him a second year bird. So he's in at least his second year of life. Because all birds have birthdays on January 1st. That's how we age them. <laughs> Happy birthday, little guy. Happy birthday. <laughs> Didn't know what you were getting into. You thought you were getting yourself a nice little a little mocha milkshake mouse, but um, ended up getting inside the truck. You're good. So now we have a unique numbered stainless steel band that we'll put around the leg. That way, if any other researcher captures this bird, 
they will have a unique number associated which they can find all the data online. And these bands are actually made out of stainless steel. So on smaller songbirds, you're gonna just use an aluminum band, but these guys, you need a much stronger one because they have that very strong pointy bill. So they can actually get those weak bands off. We will also be putting on a unique color combination with plastic bands. That way we will be able to identify each bird from a distance using binoculars or a spotting scope. These bands are unique for songbirds because it's wrapped around. Normally you'll have a really short butt end band for other songbirds, but these guys will be able to unwrap bands like these. There you go. Ouch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> She'll squeeze those down and then we'll use the solder to melt those bands together. That will give us an extra layer of protection so this bird does not remove the bands. We have had birds remove unsoldered plastic bands, so we're trying everything we can. So we're just gonna melt these ends together so that there's no opening and that hopefully they can't get their sharp little bill in there and pull them off like some of them have in the past. <laughs> The strike's actually doing pretty well. I've seen some that are a whole lot more vicious and crazy. Yeah, he's pretty calm. It's gonna be nice to us. Looks good. All right, he's all banded. Some nice jewelry for him yeah. to fly around with. Yeah. Impress his friends. So those bands won't harm the bird. Um, and as you can see from a distance, you'll be able to see the, those colors pretty vividly. Mm -hmm. And that will tell us who this bird is from a distance without actually having to capture him again, which helps us out a lot. Uh, these birds do move, so we not we might not see it in the same spot. It might be um, a mile away or in the, another state. Um, this bird is most likely overwintering here, and so he may breed further up north in a different state. Um, so if a researcher researcher sees those bands, they can contact us and say we got your bird here, which is would be great. This part's pretty comical. <laughs> here we're taking the way of the bird. So now we zeroed up the scale and we'll shove this bird head first. We are, <laughs> got our old lemonade concentrate can. There we Perfect go. size. Perfect size for a strike. Standard scientific equipment. <laughs> this does not hurt the bird. The bird is fine. <laughs> and 53.3 <laughs> grams. That's a pretty large strike. Perfect. All right, so we collected all the data that we needed. All we need now is a unique num or a unique name to give this bird so we know which bird this is. So we usually give them fun, fun names. I got a fun name. Okay. I got a fun name. Okay, it? how about Shrek? Shrek the Shrike. Ooh. I like Shrek. Shrek the Shrike. Shrek is like one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> and he's he got is, green. Yeah, he's, he's got, got green. green bands. He defends his territory while he's kicking the mockingbirds around. So we'll call him Shrek. How could you not call him Shrek? Shrek, Shrek the Shrek. The Shrek. <laughs> I like it. It's a good I like one. It. All right, now he will be we'll... the predecessor to General Ironbeak and the Viking who previously <laughs> occupied this territory. Yeah, so he took him over. Way to go. All right, we're about to release Shrek back into the wild. In three, two, one. We just made it back in from catching strikes. We are at Arkansas State University's bird lab and we are here with our little friend, Mocha. And like we said, this video would not have been possible today without Mocha. And we just wanna be clear that no animals were harmed in the making of this video. And we are about to release Mocha back into her cozy little hut. Ready to go home, Mocha? So thanks for all your hard work today, Mocha. Here you go, Mocha. So this is where Mocha stays at. She stays at the no strike zone. <laughs> this really awesome popsicle house. Oh, there she goes. And her little friend Moo, there's Moo in the corner. She's getting some paper. Gonna be building to her nest. Aw, Moo's so cute. Let's see what Mocha's doing underneath the roof. Hi, Mocha. You did so good today. Yeah. Okay, we'll let you rest. You had a long, eventful, and productive day. No shrieks allowed. All right, we're back in the car now. We had an amazing time with our friends today catching strikes. We were so glad and so pumped up we were able to catch one for you guys to get it close to the camera. It took us all day. It literally took us all day. Usually, you can go out and you can survey strikes and catch them like one after the other. You know, you might catch four or five in one day, but 
Today we missed out on like five or six and then finally caught that last one. And we tried on a couple more after that, but it was unsuccessful. So really pumped we were able to get that strike up close for you guys today. And how cool are those birds? Those birds are awesome. They look like vicious mockingbirds, really. <laughs> and just everything about them is really cool. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to hit the like button for us. And if you'd like to see us do this again, be sure to let us know in the comments section. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future outdoor adventures. We're, we're Colin and Jay, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.